So what, uh, what's in your heart today? As you walked through the front door and took a seat for church, what kind of stuff have you been dealing with this week? I mean, some tough stuff, maybe some good stuff, a lot of ordinary stuff maybe. I stood in a parking lot this morning and kind of watched the cars going up and down the Grange Road in the darkness, and I kind of wonder, I wonder where that person's going. I wonder if they're going to a good thing, a tough thing, where, what kind of journey will they have? You know, when you walk in the church in the morning, you, I'm sure, have your share of joys and some sorrows and some battles you've been dealing with. And all I've been thinking about this week is that crazy serenity prayer about being able to accept those things in life that we cannot change and having the courage to change those things that we can. I'm not sure how you feel. Uh, I think we live in a relatively complicated world. Sometimes things that used to be simple are now complicated, like trying to get a doctor's appointment. <laughs> I was talking to one guy this morning who said uh, his dad was about ready to be released from rehab and it took him two days because it took him three or four phone calls just to get his prescription and they wouldn't let him go until he got the prescription. I mean, sometimes just pumping gas can be an adventure. But a lot of times, just those little simple things, ordinary things, can be complicated, especially for dinosaurs like me who try to change things I can't change. I always want our church to be simple. I always want the message of our church to be simple. And I want being part of a church like we are to not be complicated, that we can simply come and enjoy what we are all about. And that's the spirit of kind of loving each other and caring for each other. I got a call from a, another parish this week. And it's so easy to make the church complicated because there's a young man who's going to be a, a godparent at that church. But they want proof that he's baptized. And so they call me and they say, uh, you know, Reverend, uh, can you send us his baptismal certificate? And I said, no, he's got it. And they said, well, he lost it. So I asked Kathy, I said, would you just go in the records and verify that he was baptized? And sure enough, his name was right there, the date of the baptism of the godparents. And I got back on the phone and I said, yep, he was baptized. And she said, but I need a certificate. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know, I, I'm a, a minister. Not a great one, I'm a minister, and I assume your pastor is a minister. Can't you just take my word for it? <laughs> and she said, no. <laughs> At the end of the conversation, and it was a polite conversation, I said, you know, this sometimes is what's wrong with the church. I mean, you don't trust me. <laughs> I baptized him. I baptized him. And she said, I understand. And I said, that's... We need to learn to keep it simple and keep it honest and trust each other. And I realized, Don, after that conversation, try to accept those things you cannot change, and that baptismal certificate was something that I will never be able to change. So I sent him a fake one. What the heck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Serenity is an inside job. Serenity is about our heart and soul. It's about the way we look at the world. It's knowing inside that we are not alone no matter what we face. It's knowing that we need to help others and listen to others with patience and decency. It's easy to lose touch with our serenity. It's easy to lose touch with ourselves and with others. I'm sure you have people in your life where you might have been close for a long time and you knew, and all of a sudden you realize, my gosh, I don't even know where they are anymore. I don't know how to get a hold of her or him. There's a guy named Tom. He and his wife came here for a long time, and she passed away and did her funeral, and then he had to go to a couple of different places because he started to live with Alzheimer's. And I was realizing about a couple months ago, I said, I don't even know how to find Tom. I went to his 90th birthday party a while back, but I don't even know where he is. And an email came to the church, ironically, a couple of days ago. It was just sent to the church. <laughs> and one of the first things is, is Pastor Don still there? 
Unfortunately, yes, he is. <laughs> and he left his phone number, and I hooked up with him. And it was a relief to both of us. And he said, my dad's in memory care. He's at the VA hospital in Hines. And we'd love to have you visit him if you can find him, because that place is huge. I mean, they have buildings a mile long. And he's in building number 217. So I went there yesterday, and I found him. And I walked into the hallway and had a sign on there. It said, Serenity Place. And I found his room, and there he was, lying in bed. And I knew he wouldn't open his eyes. And I knew he wouldn't know me. And his son said, he's not going to know you. And I said, yeah, but I know him. He's not going to see you, but I want to see him. And so I just pulled up a chair. They had a little picture of a fireplace and a waterfall on the TV. And there was music in the background. I mean, the room was immaculate. Pictures of his family on the table. <clears throat> And I just sat there for half an hour, and it felt good to be there, because he was at peace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And I was wishing I could just hold on to that feeling for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week. But serenity is about peace, and it's about maybe reconnecting, not just with somebody else, but with our soul and our spirit. There's also a guy named Ed I'm thinking about today. Eddie and his family, Lynn and his kids, were a, a vital part of this church for so many years. And you know how it can go sometimes. You go different ways. <laughs> but by the grace of God, about three years ago, we reconnected. And uh, had a chance to visit him when he was re rehabilitating from a stroke. And he did really well. And he had a bad fall. And now he's in a nursing home. He was in the hospital. And it was just good to be with him. And then got the word yesterday morning that Eddie Fisher passed away unexpectedly. Gathered around his bed with his family and his kids and his grandkids, but it was a little bit of a celebration of reconnection. And Eddie is just one of the heroes and mentors in AA. He's been in AA for like 35 years. You mention Ed Fisher to anybody in AA, and they say, oh my God, what a guy. But it was just that reconnection that kind of felt good in the hospital room, just like it was with Tom. And then there's bingo. You know, I'm sometimes ashamed of myself. Because how many times have I sat here and begged you to sign up for stuff so that there's enough people to make it worthwhile? Well, where does that come from? So I remember last Sunday I said, we have about 50 players. We could use a few more. Well, <laughs> Friday night there were 80. <clears throat> but at the end of the thing, we have a, uh, the, the uh, coverall, which is, was worth $200, which is big stuff for us. And uh, so the... One of you brought your mom's, just a very humble, blue-collar lady, and she won the coverall. And one of you went up to give her the money, and we were all happy for her. And when nobody was looking, she quietly handed the money back. And I told her later, I said, you know, uh, you don't have to do that. And she said, I know what this church means to my family. That's the least I can do. And then Friday, this lady comes through the door. And she's carrying this huge gift basket for the auction. And she walks in the door, and she's just crying. And I make people cry, but not that fast. <laughs> but she walked in the door, and I introduced myself. She said, I know who you are. I know this church. I know what this church did for my brother, teacher at Stag, whose wife has cancer, and you had a bingo. You didn't even know him, and you had a bingo in his honor. And then a couple weeks later, my mom died, and you prayed for her. So this gift basket is to say thank you for my brother and in memory of my mom, and she just, uh, it was just so spontaneous and so moving. And afterwards, I just had to sit there and thought of that serenity prayer. You know, you can't change everything. You got to accept what you cannot. And also just be open to gifts like that that come your way for almost no reason. Yes, our world is complicated, to be sure. And our lives can be complicated. And we have a tendency to live in a how much and how big world. But each one of us, we have to somehow wend our way through everything that we deal with. And sometimes that serenity is an elusive gift, because, but it does lurk deep inside the heart and soul of each one of us. And if we can find spaces and places to just celebrate that serenity, that's one of the greatest gifts. And I hope to some extent you can find that here. Because serenity is quiet. Serenity is humble. It grows out of our weakness, but gives us the strength to face tomorrow. 
Yes, for everything, there is a season. And I'm just glad that for all those seasons, God is with us every step of the way. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed.